So in this section, we're going to talk about primitive types. And the first category of primitive types are called scalar types. So the first one here of the scalar types is integer. And as we have seen many times before, we just define our variable. We do one, two, three, and we can print the value of x, one, two, three. And then we get the result, value of x, one, two, three. Now, if we toggle on the inlay, we see that that is i32. So that was inferred. That is a default of Rust. And we can change it to i64, for example, if we want to have bigger numbers, press save, and everything works the same. And obviously, we can go back explicitly to i32. We press save, and everything works the same. So basically, there's two types of integers. There's a sign one, which can have minus and pluses, which starts with the letter i. And then the unsigned one, which can only have positive numbers, but for the same number of bits, can have bigger numbers because they don't have the negatives. And then we have the i size and u size, which are dependent on the platform you are running on. So if you are running on a 32 bit, the i size and the u size would be 32 bits. And if you are running on a 64 bits, it would be 64 bits. So now the second type of scalar types here is the floating numbers, which is numbers with decimals. And there's two floating numbers, 32 bits and 64 bits. And so the way we define it here is let y equal 3 to 1, 1 to 3. And we can print the value exactly like any other numbers. And if we toggle on the inlay here, which again would be probably the default of your VS code, you will see that by default is F64. So by default, a sign integer, the one that starts with the i, is i32. The default of the floating number is f64. So now if we make it explicit, but we do a i32, which is again not a floating type, press save, and then we get this error, obviously. So here we need to go back, either remove it like that, that will work fine, or we can be explicit again. F32 if we wanted to take it less bits in memory. And then everything works fine. So now let's do some numeric operations just to get used to it. So for example, here we can have Z and we can do Y divided by 2.0. Then we are doing the println here, value of Z, press save, and then everything works fine. Now if we go back here and we actually remove the dot zero here, which is which doesn't seem to be useful and press save, we get this error. And the reason why is you cannot make operation between two major types here, between integers and floating types. So what you need to do here is two as F32. And so that will cast two as a F32, and then after you press save and everything works fine. So obviously when you have fixed values, you use the dot zero notation. Now similarly, if we take Y and we do X divided by two, then we have the same issue here, which is basically x is an integer, and you cannot divide it by a floating number. So what you have to do here is cast x as a f32, for example, and that will work fine. So on the right side, it will be by default f64. On the left side, it would be f32. But since they are both floating numbers, you can make operations between them. And then obviously, we can also do a f64, press save, and that will be completely fine. And like many other languages, you can have a lot of operations. So for example, here we can do a x modulo, and we do x, the percent sign to say modulo, two, and then we can print the result. And the third scalar type here is a Boolean. And the Boolean, like many other languages, you just define it. The value is either true or false here. So we can say let happy equals true. And we can see here that the inferred value is bool. And then we can define another one here, coding, equal false. So that is the two possible values. And then we do a println, then a happy coding, question mark, the value. And then we are going to do happy and end coding. And that is very similar to any language, which basically will return true if both are true. And we print save. This is false, but we're actually very happy. And then we press save and we get our true. So obviously here we can be explicit on the type as well. So here, so we are going to do a bool, press save, and everything works fine. Okay, so now the fourth and the last scalar type is char. And char is one character. There's a lot of things behind it, but for now, let's say that char is like one character. 
the way it works here is you define it with a single quote and you put any characters you want inside. And then you can print it as any other values. So if you toggle on the inlays again here, the infer type is char, and obviously you can make it explicit as well. Now the cool things here in Rust, like in modern languages, this is actually Unicode, which means that you have a lot of more characters than what we used to have. So for example, here we can make this like weirdo happy face, press save, and then we have it. So now the second big category is here of primitive types is what is called compound types. And there's only two, the tuple and the array. So let's go and see the tuple first. And they are called compound because you actually have multiple values for a same variable. And they are called primitive because they are fixed in size and they are used to create more complex types. So the way you define a tuple here, for example, let's say 0.3D, which will have three numbers, and is with a parenthesis. So you do a parenthesis like this, and then you type here the numbers that you want. So that would be the coordinate of our point 3D. And we see here as a trust analyzer here, again, the things in gray, we didn't type it, it's just analyzers that get the information from the Rust compiler and display it to us in gray. And so we see here that the default numbers here is I32. So that again is the scalar type I32. And the way we print it is going to be with println. But now since it's not a single value, we need to use what is called in println the debug mode here. And that will be with this bracket, colon, question mark. And then we give our point 3D here, press save, and we see that the value has been displayed the same way that we entered it. So when you want to debug your code here and to know what's going on, this is a good way to print your tuples. Now, obviously, like with any other types, we can do explicit typing. So here are the first three values. We are going to say it's i64, press save, and everything works the same. One of the key attributes of tuples is that every element doesn't have to be the same type. So for example, here, if we wanted to add gravity to our point 3D, so we're going to say point 3D with gravity, and we can say that the first element is the F32. And then we're going to feel light here, so we're going to say that the gravity is 9.3, and we're going to change the println, press save, and now we have our four values, and the last one is a F32. Now with tuple, the way you can access each element is with a dot notation. So for example, here we're going to do a println, value of gravity, dot tree. So that is the index of the fourth element like in an array, but rather to use the brackets, we're using the dot notation. Press save, and now it prints value of gravity, 9.3. Now the second compound type is array. And the difference between an array and a tuple is that in an array, the length is still fixed, but every element must have the same types. So the way you define an array here is with let A equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example. And then we print it here, the same way here in the debug mode with the question mark, press save, and that prints our array. Now, if we toggle on here, the Rust analyzer, we see this little notation with a semicolon. That means that is of type I32, which is the default for all the numbers here. And the semicolon means that this array has a length of five. So arrays, in Rust are fixed size. If you want to have a dynamic size, you use what is called a vector that we'll see in future chapters. So here again, we could put it explicit here and we say I32 and five element. Press save, everything was fine. Then obviously we can change the type here. So if we say the type, for example, I64, everything will work fine. But now if we say that the array is six and we press save, we'll get an error, a compile error. So again, the arrays are fixed lengths. So here I need to initialize it with a value. Here we're going to put six, press save, and everything was fine. Now, if we try to put a value here of a different type, for example, the last value here is going to be a static string, then we press save, then we get this error. It's not an I64. So everything has to be of the same type. And it's the same thing with numbers, yeah? So if we put a F64 here, 6.2, press save, then we get the same error. So to fix that, you either have to put all integers, or you can change the type here to F64. If you press save, you get the error because the other one doesn't have the decimal. So then you need to add the dot zero to all of them and then press save, and then everything works fine. So obviously arrays can store any types, 
any fixed types. So for example, here we're going to create an array of ski months, and it's going to be December, January, February, March, and April. And we can see that Rust Analyzer here is showing us that Rust infers the type of each element of being reference of str, which is a reference to static strings. We'll talk about that later. And then we have five elements. Now we can print the array here with the same debug notation. Press save, and we get our five months. Now if we want to print a specific item, we're going to use, like many other languages, the bracket notation. So here we do not need to have the debug notation on the println because it's just a string. And then we have ski months, bracket zero. Press save, and then we have our first months. Now the last feature here of Rust about arrays is to be able to initialize all of the array members with the same value. So for example here, if we define B, we can give an array of 12 semicolon six. And because we have done semicolon and we haven't done a comma, then what happened here is that Rust is going to initialize B with six elements with a value 12. So now if we do the print B, we see that it's an array of six 12s. And that will conclude our sections about primitive types.